everybody marketing uh gurus experts practitioners executives and just beginners welcome to another marketing strategy session today i have liam with me and we're going to talk about his journey in marketing now he says he's been marketing since he was three years old but i don't know about three years old he's he's been marketing for a long time and he's actually been selling for a long time um, and he's going to tell us a little bit about himself, his journey, and then his company. Uh, and and I want to uh, uh, welcome you to the show. Thank you so much for being on with me today. Yeah, cheers, Jeff. Appreciate uh, the invite and excited to have this uh, talk today. Great. So you've been doing this for a long time. I mean, you said you've been doing this since probably what? I guess you would say teenage years or preteen. You've been really in the business game for, for a minute. Yeah, definitely. Like uh, 99, I think it was, I was uh, working at a startup out of Sydney, uh, mm. online dating back in, you know, the year 2000, 2004, they sold the company. I was just an employee at the time, but they sold it to Match.com for uh, 28 million, I think it was. Wow. Uh, and I just, yeah, and I just got the, I suppose, the bug, if you like, just seeing the impact you could have connecting people uh, online. And we, like, we were getting, like, videos, letters from people who had found their, their soulmate who were getting married. We got invites to weddings from people wow. that we'd matched on this platform. Yeah. And it was, like, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people all around the world who were checking out this online dating thing back then, like way pre-Tinder. And just that capacity to, uh, if you've got the right product uh, to market mm -hmm. and promote it out there into the world for people who need uh, your solution, your offering, uh, it's the internet, the power of that just sparked for me back then. And uh, ever since then, I've been yeah, marketing online. Wow, wow. So, so basically, I mean, the product, you had all right so you had the the connection app so you know that's pr pretty much the product but you understood your audience and their need and 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 what would you say would be their need was it really the dating or was it the attention or was it the access i mean how did you approach the marketing because when we look at online dating we say that it's love but love really isn't the product, I mean, really, <laughs> to be honest, I mean, how did y'all kind of work through that and say, okay, we understand this is the audience, this is what they need, and this is what we bring to the table that can benefit it? Yeah, sure. So we uh, knew what our strength was, and it was really the power of the, the technology that we built, uh, as well as the, the platform uh, and the, the conversions, like the success people were having, like the matching technology that was being used there. Uh, okay. So what we did was we just went out there and we started looking for, all right, well, who, who has an audience of people okay. that needs this offering? Mm -hmm. So we went out there looking for essentially strategic partners for us to white label our product uh, okay. for their own brands. So we got the likes of MSN on board, like Yahoo, all those types of guys, anyone who had a large online following, an audience, mm -hmm. we were powering their, their dating uh, technology. Uh, and this is, the, I'm talking about worldwide here as well, from little old Sydney, Australia. Wow, really? So really it was the strategic partnerships that you had with some people with larger audiences and you provided a benefit to them and their audience uh, to get your reach out there. Um, yeah, essentially allowing them a way to monetize that audience. Uh, 
it was very early days, you know, early 2000s, 2004 we sold, right? So we were doing this uh, really early on. Uh, and ever since then, really, like every business that I've been involved in that's uh, been successful, at least, has been leveraging uh, partnerships, strategic ventures to just enable uh, reach uh, okay. so that if you've got a great idea, you've got a great product, but you're not getting enough leads and sales, well, go and find the people who already have the audience that are your ideal target market your ideal yeah. clients and customers and yeah. have a conversation about them what it would be look what it would look like to form some kind of strategic alliance okay and that, that that's a huge huge uh um insight right there is that those strategic alliances you know a lot of times i think a lot of uh businesses feel like they need to do it themselves on their own with their own platform we started from scratch built it to this by ourselves instead of leveraging those out there that can be great strategic partners. So Yeah, and, and you can even think about like as you were talking there, I was thinking like if you're listening to this on, on a podcast, maybe it's Apple iTunes, we're leveraging the audience, the customers of Apple to reach out and reach people at versus uh, if you're watching a video, maybe you're watching this on YouTube, right? We're leveraging YouTube's audience, Google's audiences, wherever you found this from, like you, you may not even be aware of it, but if you are wanting to get, you know, the first ranking on Google, you're leveraging Google's audience. But how can we do that in, you know, a smaller scale with partners who are aligned with us and have a similar market uh, mm -hmm. that can transfer their trust across to us? Essentially, okay. that's what we're doing because these people already have trust with their audience. And if they're making a recommendation, hey, come and check out Liam's new online course or his coaching program to help you get more clients people are going to trust me more when they arrive because they've been referred and recommended to me okay and that makes sense now how has it changed since 2004 so so that was 2004 and 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 now in, in well we don't want to date this but now in 2021 how has it really changed um being of course there's more tools out there there's more saturation out there um you know how have you seen that market changing there's there's more people online <laughs> and they're spending more and more time online right like i don't know if you've heard with with china i mean they're clamping down on the amount of time people are spending online because they feel it's too much whether that's right or wrong right we won't get into the politics of it but th like this is a growing phenomenon more and more people are spending time online with the you know the invention of the the mobile phone and internet access unlimited data like there's more and more space and opportunity for you to be reaching your audience online so in terms of like how's the market changed i think it's just become more and more opportune you're seeing like startups pop up and get billion dollar valuations within just a few years because of this huge audience that's online and we still haven't adapted and created enough products and software and capabilities for them to ultimately make the most use of uh, the internet these online offerings that are out there like the idea of meeting someone on the other side of the planet via a computer screen or you know via tinder before like maybe tinder swipe left swipe right like made it pretty cool right but we were doing this uh, a few decades ago and even before that they were doing it manually right so it's just about uh, adapting and taking advantage and i think the window of opportunity over the next 10 years uh is really phenomenal you just need to look at okay well who in my space has the same audience as me or a similar audience with a complementary product. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe it's competitive, but if it's uh, not competitive, maybe that's a little bit better. And we're, we're looking at ways in which we could maybe sh recommend each other's products and services because they are complementary. Yeah. And actually I've heard somebody, I forgot the speaker that said this, so I don't want to say the wrong person came out that, but he says, I don't look at anybody as competitors. I look at everybody as collaborators. And, um, you know, if you take that approach and find the wins in, in, in the opportunities versus saying, well, you have an app, I have an app, we can't work together. Well, you know, that's not altogether true. 
or you you deal in a dating space and I deal in the dating space, so we can't work together. You know, it's kind of interesting taking that collaborative approach to say, how can we all win? You know, we're still giving the end product um, to uh, an audience that wants this particular thing, whatever it may be. You may be providing the technology. I may be providing the, let's say, the visual aspect of it, uh, giving the cool overlays or cool effects that goes into it. Whatever be the case, we can still talk to the same audience and provide them a better product or service uh, in the long run. Absolutely, absolutely. And if, if this is probably one of the lowest hanging fruit you can, you can find out there because like, if you're doing paid advertising, right, you're looking at your cost per lead. If you're looking at a joint venture and yeah. a partner to do this type of deal with, like, it's free traffic. Essentially, you don't have to pay for it, right? It's your, they're, they're sending you traffic, recommending you and your products, and potentially there's a deal where uh, you're giving them um, a reciprocal deal where maybe you're sharing and promoting their products on behalf of them. So this is something that can be done by anyone, whether you're a beginner or a corporate exec. Like, look at those opportunities out there of, um, you know, uh, alternative uh, products or, sorry, complementary products and programs and offerings that your audience would be interested to hear about. Uh, because okay. you're also providing value to your audience when you're also sharing that next step with them. So when you're doing strategic alliances, do you look at first the numbers or do you look at the company and what they offer? Or do, do you, how, how do you approach it? I mean, some people just say, oh, I, I want to go after this particular company and partner with them because they get in front of X amount of people. Or they may say, well, I want to get in front of this type of audience. Let me find out what companies get in front of it. Or others might say, I just want to build my brand reputation because if I'm partnered with this type of company, it'll make my company. How do you approach, you know, what are some of the things that you look at when you say this might be a good person to align with or a good company, let's say, to yeah. align with? Yeah, good, good, uh, good, great, great question there. So oh, I threw a curveball. I threw a curveball. No, no, this is, I don't, I don't know where to start because, like, uh, ultimately, like, this is such an important question for people. Uh, and what, when, you, when you look at this, you've got to think, all right, well, how do, uh, if I approach someone, what kind of relationship do I have with them? So how do I, like, if, if we go in there cold, we're probably going to be knocked back potentially, all right, or our conversion rate or our, uh, the, the ability of them to say yes is probably lowered because they don't know you. So how do we build a relationship with them? And it's as simple as something like this, right? Like invite them onto your, your podcast or your show or your video series or like what I do, I uh, run virtual events. So all my clients, I say, if you want to look for joint ventures in your market, become an authority in your niche based on all these partners referring you and having relationships with these influences in your market, then invite them on to, to your event to speak on your stage. And we typically do that either via a, a virtual workshop, which is just a simple 90 minute workshop, which can be um, set up, delivered and created within seven days. So within the next week, you could have your workshop all set up for yourself or you run um, a virtual summit where then it may be multiple speakers across multiple days. I mean, it can okay. be anywhere from half a day all the way up to, you know, three, five days. Typically, we like to recommend. I've done a 10-day online event before, uh, but that was probably a bit too much, and I wouldn't recommend that for most uh, people and entrepreneurs out there. But invite them onto your show. Invite them to speak on your stage in front of your audience. Position okay. them as the expert uh, for whatever topic they're going to be invited on to speak. Mm -hmm. They're going to they're gonna love the fact that you've invited them onto your show to speak at your event in front of your audience. They, they're going to they're gonna really um, like and build rapport with you. Okay. Once um, you have them on your show, at your event, speaking, ideally you're doing it in interview style, uh, similar to this, where you're actually having a conversation with them. Again, you're able to build a relationship during that time. Okay. Uh, and during that conversation, hopefully they start to understand, 
your expertise and the value that you provide in the market because you're both in the same market. You're both at this event. You're hosting the event. You've invited them in uh, mm. to speak on, the, on a similar topic. So there might be some ways that you could potentially work together. And from there, it's like, how about we set up a, a separate call to talk about how we could maybe do more things together? Like this event was a great way to kick things off. I'm so glad you invited me to be part of this, but how can we, how can we maybe do some more things that can really, you know, what you said before about um, there's no such thing as competitors. Like I'm a strong believer in a rising tide lifts all boats. So yeah. if you're in the market and, you know, this person is, is growing the market, then you're also growing the market as well and you're all benefiting. Like a rising tide lifts all boats. So invite someone onto your virtual event, a workshop, a summit, interview them, share your stage with them and that's how we start initiating the relationship uh, mm -hmm. in a really authentic way, giving a lot of value. Like you're coming on to speak on my stage. I see you as an authority. It's a compliment. Come and speak on my stage. I could have chosen from these hundreds or thousands of other people, but I've chosen you. Yeah. And then let's talk about potentially how it might look to, to work further together and do similar opportunities or even other joint ventures together. The cat's out the bag. I do that all the time and it works. The cat is out the bag, you know, inviting people that are experts to talk. And then you, you know, you have a synergy, you find out opportunities in that conversation and then it, it leads to other things. Opportunities present themselves. So, so that, that definitely is a technique that works. <laughs> so cool. 100%. So that, and that brings up another thing. I mean, tell us what you're doing now. I mean, you, you talked about the, 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 the summit, the online uh, virtual events and so forth. And that's very big now in today's time. Um, you know, tell us more about what you're doing with that, as well as other things that you're doing uh, right now. Yeah, sure. So 2015, I ran my first virtual summit. Uh, we had 15,000 business owners at that event. Wow. Online event for three days all online we had 15,000 people wanting to learn how to generate leads and sales from LinkedIn wow. so from the, from there 15,000 I knew that we had something here and uh, I wanted to do more of this like we were in we had 15,000 people that were impacting uh, we made $50,000 just in ticket sales and then it's all about like we've now got 15,000 leads in our database we send them further into our online courses, our coaching programs, or whatever your products and services may be. Mm -hmm. So we've done, um, I've done, I've hosted personally over 15 of these summits, averaging about 10,000 people. But I've also run these shorter 90-minute workshops that I've been talking about. And I call them our quick workshop wins. Okay. So you deliver a quick workshop win, which is a quick win within just 90 minutes during the workshop. And from there, they get to know you, they see you as an authority as a get, uh, and a go-to expert, someone that can deliver a result. Remember, you've given them a quick win and they're looking at, okay, well, this was 90 minutes was awesome, but how can we spend 90 days or nine months together so I can get even more quick wins and results from you? So what, what is it like to work together for even longer? So that's what we're doing with our virtual events. We're creating what I like to call virtual events that sell, Okay. Uh, virtual events that sell your online courses, coaching programs, typically are the clients that I work with. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyone who's creating or selling information-based products, speakers, authors, podcast hosts, right? Anyone who wants to be seen as the go-to expert in their niche. Because when you've got that credibility and authority with mm -hmm. your target audience, and especially those people that are on your email list, it's so yeah. much easier then to invite them into your other products and services, like your, yeah. your high ticket programs that may be, you know, if we're looking at a typical, you know, 12 month coaching program, it could be $5,000, $10,000, $20,000, dollars sales that we can be doing to our market. Okay. Yeah. So you're basically bringing them in, you, they get familiar. And then from there, it's easier to sell to somebody that knows you already, that's warm, uh, than it is to try to always sell to people that's cold. Um, it, it's amazing how many businesses don't get that. 
um, I, I usually call it the cell phone approach. You remember back now, cell phone companies now are starting to change their messaging. But remember, cell phone companies were famous for the new customers got all the benefits. Current customers, uh, existing customers, longstanding customers don't get any of the benefits. You don't get any of the new phones for free, any of that stuff. And it's so much easier for a person that already trusts you, they know you, to sell them something else of benefit than to always try to get new people to buy new things that they don't know anything about. Uh, so that just makes sense, getting them through a progression. Yeah. So tell us, uh, as far as like you're teaching how to leverage these online summits and workshops and so forth. Um, how can somebody get in touch with you to learn how to do that? Yeah, sure. Well, I'm a big believer in systems and uh, predictability in our business. So we get a consistent flow of leads, revenue, clients in our business, right? Yeah. So a big thing for me, like uh, uh, one of our programs, our, our signature program is uh, Predictable Income Freedom. So it's okay. about predictability in the business, predictable income every month that's consistent and freedom, like time freedom. So automating our business, time freedom, financial freedom. Okay. So uh, when we run our, our virtual events, it's all about, well, we run it once, but then we turn it into a, an asset, an online course that we sell forever. It's recorded, right? The first time we launch our virtual event live, it's now recorded and we can sell it every single day, week, month, year into the future. Okay. Easiest way to do this is doing um, or getting really a quick workshop win. Uh, and if you go to quickworkshopwin.com, you can mm -hmm. grab my checklist. This is where you'll see, um, I love my, my systems and processes and just checklists to make sure that everything that you do to set up and create your 90 minute workshop mm -hmm. is done to maximize your return on investment. So you're spending a lot of time, energy to market and promote and then deliver this workshop. We want to make sure that those attendees, yes, we'll be selling tickets to the workshop as well. Uh, so we're making a little bit of money there, but we want to also invite people into working with us further into our higher price products and programs and services, right? So mm -hmm. quickworkshopwin.com. Uh, go grab the checklist there and I'll explain exactly how to create one of these workshops for yourself uh, in the next seven days. That sounds wonderful right there. That sounds wonderful. Now, now you know, we're going to get geeky right now. A little bit of geek, a little bit of tech. So the, the, the actual checklist, that's the lead magnet. So that's the free product. But when they come to the workshop, the workshop's actually a paid workshop and that qualifies them and they learn from that. And then if they want to go up the funnel, they then get upsold to a higher ticket item like the program, maybe some mentorship, coaching, things of that nature, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. And the great thing about it is that uh, during that workshop, they're getting to like know you, they're seeing you as an expert and they want to continue working with you. So that next conversation is... Uh, just that it's just a conversation it's not like really uh, upselling them it's more inviting them or trying to figure out really how we could work together to deliver the results that they want yeah that's great that is great so everybody i mean i'm going to quick workshop when i don't know what y'all are gonna do but i think that's a great resource because there's so many theories out there um you know for you to have fifteen thousand people come to one event first of all i have so many technical questions because a lot of times a lot of platforms won't even you know hold that many people um, um and then for you to get that many people interested that's a whole nother podcast you know for you to get that many people interested but but i, I don't know if the listeners understand how much gold that is because now you have people that allow you to basically communicate with them from now until you find out what it is and when it is that they're ready to do business with you. You know, because a lot of times people think that it's, it's like, oh, I see you. I want to do business right now. And it's not. It takes time. 
They get to know you. The timing might not be right. They may be the right audience. They might want to do business, but the timing just isn't right. And so they're in your pipeline and now you can keep communicating with them until the time is right. So yeah, tell me more about that. That is so exciting. Yeah, sure. So yeah, the summit, you're inviting multiple speakers to come and speak at your event. So you've got multiple joint venture partners, influencers in your niche who are speaking at your event on your stage. So mm -hmm. their influence and authority, their credibility is being transferred to you as the host. So you're uh, standing in your niche, raises, people are maybe introduced to you uh, and they're seeing you now as an authority, bring this group of influencers in the market together all under one roof. Mm -hmm. So you've got this transferred authority. Typically people are getting a free ticket to the event. So you're able to collect these uh, the email addresses, the contact details of the attendees. Mm -hmm. uh, and the speakers who are speaking on the event are promoting the event and saying that, hey, I'm speaking at this event next grab them here at this link so you've got your partners the joint ventures they've it's already began during this event right so they're sending traffic to you at the event they want to promote that they're speaking on stage right it raises their authority in the mind of their existing audience their audience is being recommended to come and sign up for the event your event the authority is being transferred to you and then the conversation with uh, those speakers about well what can we do together in the future to keep this going, right? The, the event that we first invite someone to um, speak on, it mm -hmm. shouldn't be just a one-off. It's just the beginning of the relationship. Like for my first event in 2015, I'm now still really good friends um, with the speakers there that I've never met before. They've invited yeah. me into their own masterminds. One, I'm even, well, two, I'm a part business owner with so the opportunities down the track if you build the relationships with influencers successful people in your market right mm -hmm. are endless so if you want some more information about that um i've got a free class on that it's uh, virtualsummitclass.com okay. and you can learn a little bit about what it takes to yeah set that up i know you asked about the tech i keep it really simple because most of my audience are speakers authors experts experts who just want to share a message teach the world and make an impact and so the tech side of things don't want to worry about that so i keep that super simple and really easy to set up and i've been using zoom okay. since 2015 for my very first event so wow. that's how easy it is guys that's how easy it is like we keep it super simple uh with only you know a couple of tech uh that you probably already have wow that is wonderful right there. So everybody, write this down. You've got quickworkshopwins.com and you have virtualsummitclass.com if you want to learn how to leverage joint venture to, to put on events as well as build relationships for future opportunities. So it's more than just putting on events. It's more than just well, let me see how I can generate traffic, generate leads. This is actually building businesses, building relationships that open up other opportunities. So those are the two websites to write down. Um, hopefully you're there. And, and, and Liam, thanks so much for all this information. You've given so many different branches to this tree of success. I mean, you know, every we started off just talking about, you know, what you were doing back in 2004. And now, you know, we, we really could cut this into three different topics for three different podcasts. So that is wonderful, man. Thanks so much for sharing with us. No worries, Jeff. Um, it's been really interesting. I've never, like, um, done that connection between on a podcast before uh, in terms of my success uh, in that online dating business all the way through to now. But joint ventures, like, it's been a success factor all the way through my career. And when you find something that works, like go after it, like keep repeating it, do it better, do it more often. How can you scale this? Look at other ways you can partner with people to scale this um, joint venture um, strategy that you've been uh, implementing your whole life. So if, if you're here listening because you wanna learn from other experts, honestly, just, 
go and do this like today. Quickworkshopwin.com, virtualsummitclass.com. Obviously, they're free. Go grab that. And there's some upgrades there if you want uh, to le- go even deeper into it. But really, just listen to the experts. Uh, I've had over 400 experts speak at my events over the last uh, about five, six years now. Uh, and they've helped form the success of my business today. And I mean, I'm in Sweden right now. Um, I'm Australian. Most of my clients are in the US. Uh, it's, it's this whole online world can open up uh, so many doors for you. I mean, I talk about my, my program, Predictable Income Freedom, like having predictable income and the freedom that that provides is just phenomenal. And I'm sure uh, many of you listening want that for yourself, for your family, for your loved ones. Uh, so essentially like, Jeff's pulling together some amazing experts here in his show. Like, if, like, just stop the podcast or the show right now and go and implement and go and take action on this right now. Because if you just move on to the next expert without taking action, you're never going to move forward. So, whenever you're, yeah. you know, listening with Jeff's, uh, uh, you know, speakers and guests, just make sure, yeah, you go away and take action. Yeah. I mean, that's really the key to it. Taking action. Knowledge is only as powerful as the action taken behind it. So I, I I agree with you. And I thank you so much. I mean, and you are truly showing what the term is, who you know, is all about. I mean, who you know and building those relationships with who you know can open up doors. And a lot of us think that who you know just is, uh, well, I know this person. That, but you haven't built a relationship. You just know of them. And they may know of you but you haven't built that relationship. So that's very key. And, you know, let these doors open. Opportunities always present themselves when you're taking movement and they usually present themselves in ways that you couldn't have imagined. You know, it just, like you said, you didn't think that the online dating back in 2004 would open up what you're doing now. And it's funny how you said it. And we, I want to point on this, you focused on what you were strong at. And a lot of times we focus on what we're weak weak at and we try to fix everything that we are weak at instead of saying, you know, this is working. Let me just keep doing what's working. And I'm going to just keep doing what's working until it stops working. And, you know, I I think that that's very wise of you to uh, not just say, well, you know, this is the new trend in marketing. Let me do that. Hey, We've been doing it well for years. We'll just stick with what works. And uh, it's worked well for you. So great. Everybody that is listening, it's time to take action. It's time to go ahead. The information is free, so there's no excuse. It's just time on your hands. And then if it's something that works for you and you want to move on to learn even more and get more advanced, then the opportunities are there for you to go ahead and learn even more in even more advanced ways of how to build your business, leveraging strategic partnerships and the relationship game. So thanks everybody for listening. Thanks Liam for coming on. I really appreciate the time and I hope everyone the best of success.